So this has got to be the fastest method I know to make shelf pin holes. Hey guys, welcome to lesson five of this SketchUp tutorial series. Now, I'm going to start gearing these series a little bit more in depth, focused on one specific thing, so that way whenever you pull this up, you know exactly what you're looking for and you don't have to watch a 30 minute seminar on how to do a broad range of things. So if you like this video, be sure and hit that like button. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if this is your first time. I wanna welcome you. And if this is your first time to use SketchUp, I highly encourage you to check out this card right here, which will take you to my previous episodes that will basically get you introduced to SketchUp a lot easier and faster. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to make adjustable shelf pinholes for cabinetry. Now, I know you guys have not made this particular model yet, and that's okay. What we're going to do is just make a demonstration rectangle um, cabinet side that we'll work off of, but it will translate to the same component that we have made in this cabinet. Let's go ahead and just make ourselves a rectangle. I'm gonna get rid of some of this stuff here so you guys can see exactly what I'm working with. So what I want you guys to do is make a rectangle that measures 25 and 3 quarter by 16 and a quarter. So to do that, just turn your rectangle function on. Start anywhere and then click and drag down. And then just type in 25.75 comma 16.25 and then hit enter. Then turn your push pull function on and then just drag out that rectangle that you just made to 0.75 thickness. Don't forget to make it a component by clicking into it and highlighting it, highlighting it all. Click G on your keyboard and then just name it template. Okay, now I'm gonna move mine out of the way. Now, this is the rectangle that you just made. So we're going to make some adjustable shelf pin holes. So you saw how we made this rectangle. So this is basically the front of the cabinet. This is the back of the cabinet where the back actually intersects the side. So this is the part you see, not the extension of the cabinet that you don't see. So we're going to make some guidelines that are going to be two inches from the front and two inches from the back. So start at the front and turn your tape measure function on and click on the edge and just drag over and type in two and enter. Do the same thing on the back. Type two after you've clicked and then hit enter. So let's do this from the bottom. Click, drag up. Now instead of two, I wanna do six. And do that exact same thing from the top. Click, six, and enter. Now let's measure the distance because typically shelf pin holes are an inch on center. 13 and 3 quarter is the distance that we have and unfortunately it's not an even inch number so I'm just gonna go ahead and make a 14 inch line right there and I'm just gonna get rid of that first line. So now I have a 14 inch long piece. So basically what it was is since shelf pin holes are an inch on center, I wanna be able to work with one inch increments. And because I was 13 and three quarters, that's not an inch increment. Uh, so I got rid of the 13 and three quarter line and just made me a new one from the bottom right here up 14 inches and I just hit enter and dropped it. Okay, now that we've established our guidelines, I want to go into this component. So I wanna to go to this bottom left-hand corner dotted line area. So just zoom into that so you can see better. And I'm gonna turn on my circle function in the top left-hand corner of my toolbar. Find the intersection, click, and then drag. Now these are measured in radiuses, not diameters. So if you want a quarter inch diameter circle, you need an eighth inch radius measurement. So while it's dragging out, just type one slash eight and enter. And you'll notice that the color has changed when you do your push-pull function. 
so it's separated now. Okay. Let's just highlight that circle. Just click on it. Turn your move function on and go to the exact center where the intersection is at. Click on it and start moving it and hit option or control to copy it. And we're gonna zoom out a little bit here so we can see the other dotted line. And we're just gonna drag it over to that intersection. You can zoom in while you're still pulling and drop it. Now I'm gonna zoom in so I can see both these circles at the same time to make sure that I have them both highlighted. And to do that, you just wanna click on one circle, hold your shift key and click on the other circle. And you see that plus and minus function when you hold the shift key down. See that? <clears throat> so now that they are both highlighted, I want to zoom back out to where I can see both reference lines like that. And then turn my move function back on. And I'm going to hover over the circle until it says center. And if I'm too far away, I might have to zoom in a little bit. There we go. Zoom back out now. Now I'm going to click on them so they'll start moving and hit option or control on your keyboard. Now, while this is still in the active moving status, I'm going to type in one and enter and that will drop it one inch on center. Now, apologize about the train y'all. Now, while this is still in active status without doing anything else, I'm going to type in 15x and hit enter and what that did is it multiplied all of those circles by 15 times and as you can see I did one too many circles because it went past my guideline so without doing anything you can either delete those two circles manually or you can come down here where it says 15x take that out and type in 14x and it simply removes the two circles. Now, as you can imagine, if you have multiple copies of something like that, if I had like four rows of circles, it would have taken less time to do it like this versus manually deleting them. So now that I have all of my circles made inside this component, all I have to do now is push and pull them into place, which is 3 8 of an inch deep. So I'm gonna zoom in, turn my push-pull function on, And then I'm going to pull them back, type in 3 slash 8 while it's being pulled, and hit enter. Now, all you have to do is keep your push-pull function on and just double-click on every circle after that. So now with all the holes pushed and pulled into place 3 eighths of an inch deep, just turn off your guides by clicking Shift D on your keyboard or going up to Edit and Delete Guides and it will remove those guidelines that you had strung up all over your project. Now, if you have made this a component and you have copies of it, say a left and right side of your cabinet, you can see that this is going to be rather handy because now you have affected the adjacent part much like I did on this particular cabinet so you can see as it's a big time saver and then you can bring pieces out of the 3d warehouse and put them into your project for even more dimension and then make you some shelves to set on the shelf pins so I hope you guys enjoyed this particular tutorial on how to make shelf pins if you have any comments tips suggestions be sure and drop them down below and don't forget to subscribe and follow me on all my social media. So thanks a lot, guys. I will talk to you on the next tutorial. Boom!